Hi, I'm Veronica Wasik with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. What are some strategies that you can use to diagnose a QuickBooks online cleanup? In a previous video, I told you about how to price a QuickBooks online cleanup and I shared some strategies with you for doing that. And in that video, I talked about doing a paid diagnostic review in order to be able to diagnose your client's books and be able to give them either a price range or upfront pricing for the cleanup. One of the biggest challenges I think that uh, we have as accountants and bookkeepers starting out and, um, do, and working on a cleanup is determining really the extent of how uh, messed up the file is. It takes skill and experience to develop diagnostic skills, but I will share with you uh, some of the things that I review in my own diagnostic process. So as I said, first you need to start out with a paid diagnostic review. So essentially it is getting paid to diagnose your client's books and to determine the extent of the cleanup that you have to do. I follow a very specific workflow in reviewing my client's books. So as soon as they, they sign the service agreement and pay, then uh, we request information from them. And that usually includes access to their QuickBooks online account, obtaining past uh, credit card and bank statements, and getting a copy of the last tax return. And then I use a checklist to review my client's books. I'll give you some of the highlights of the things that I review. First, I start out with the bank and credit card accounts and make sure that they have been reconciled. And if they haven't been reconciled, then I want to know when was the last time that they were reconciled. Then I also look to see what transactions still are uncleared in the bank reconciliations. So if the client has reconciled their books, then I want to see what's still uncleared. Usually, I find that there are a lot of old transactions in the bank reconciliation window, and those usually stem from duplicate and incorrect transactions being entered into QuickBooks, and of course, those have to be cleaned up. Next, I look at undeposited funds. And yes, undeposited funds is one of those accounts that always has problems. And so I am looking for old transactions in the undeposited funds window. And um, any old transactions need to be cleaned up. Next, I turn my attention to the profit and loss report. I like to start out with the profit and loss report and focusing on each section. And there I am looking for uncategorized income, I'm also looking for any transactions that look unusual or amounts and expenses that may be miscategorized. I'm looking for large negative amounts. And I'm also looking for any miscategorized uh, fixed assets. So I'm looking for a large purchases of fixed assets that perhaps were incorrectly expensed rather than uh, capitalized on the balance sheet. And then I also review the other income and other expenses section for any, um, again, any miscategorized transactions, any large unusual amounts, anything that doesn't seem normal. I'm looking for that kind of information. Then I'll do a review of the balance sheet. And I'd like to review the balance sheet on an accrual basis. And that's because I can see uh, accounts receivable and accounts payable balances. I will review the sections of the balance sheet and overall, um, if you haven't noticed, there's a thing going on. I'm always looking for unexpected balances, unusual balances, large negative balances, anything that seems out of place, I start with that first. And then I focus on the asset section. I will look for negative balances in accounts receivable, any old balances in in the asset accounts. Um, the balance sheet seems to be that, that report where all sorts of old transactions get accumulated and they never get cleaned up. So I'm looking for those types of accounts with old balances. Usually all of those accounts need to be cleaned up. I'm also looking at the additions to the fixed assets accounts. 
and looking to see whether there are any transactions that are recorded as fixed assets that don't meet the criteria for being recorded as fixed assets. So for example, say a, a $500 computer may not qualify as being recorded as a fixed asset. In that case, it would need to be expensed. Now, by the way, as I'm talking about this and mentioning that I'm looking at these reports, um, in order for me then to see what's in each balance, whether it's in the profit and loss or the balance sheet, I actually click on each amount to look to see what's in the account. So this is how I can see what's in the account. While reviewing the balance sheet, of course, I will also look at the liabilities accounts. I'm looking at uh, payroll liabilities, not clearing out, sales tax liabilities, not clearing out, maybe sales tax payments are miscategorized. I'm also reviewing for notes payable and ensuring that the principal amount of the notes payable is being recorded correctly. Usually, we'll see that the full amount of the loan payment is recorded to a loan payable or note payable and that the expense portion of the, the uh, payment hasn't been expensed. So again, that has to be cleaned up. I will review the equity section of the balance sheet. I'm looking for miscategorized uh, owner distributions. I'm looking through um, owner draws and distributions, anything that hasn't been recorded correctly. Uh, I'm also overall looking for uh, personal income and expenses that may be recorded in the company and um, noticing whether those need to be uh, recorded properly. I will also review the accounts receivable aging and the accounts payable aging and determine whether there are any old transactions that need to be uh, cleaned up. Uh, maybe balances that need to be applied to each other. This gives you a glimpse of uh, some of the most important things that I review. I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. Check the description box below for free resources and for a link to join my Facebook community of bookkeepers. If you found this video helpful, then share this video, like it, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest videos on how to grow a thriving bookkeeping business.